Hello again. Today we're wrapping up our camping series by discussing some of the tips and lessons we found helpful for setting up our family camps. Hi there, everyone. As part of our camping series, we've talked about tents and gear. We've talked about the specifics of cold weather camping. We've talked about preparing our food ahead of time and provided tips on how to make our cleanup a snap. Yes, once your camp is set up, the information that we've covered in our other videos can prove very useful. But what about getting camp set up correctly in the first place? Today, we wanted to culminate this latest camping series by simply walking through some of the key tips we rely upon to make our wilderness campsites comfortable and family friendly. The first decision to make is where to set your camp. When you aren't camping in a designated car camping site, you have some evaluation to do. So what do you look for when you're looking for a spot to place your tent? The first thing you're looking for is a close to flat location without immovable rocks or roots or other things that can poke us in the back when we're laying down at night. But of course, there's no such thing as a perfectly flat site. So we are ideally looking to meet two conditions. The first is that our heads would be at the higher end of any mild slope that you have your tent platform set up on. And the second is that you want to keep our heads towards the direction the wind is coming from, and that is away from the door. So keeping your head above your feet is important for proper circulation overnight. And we'd rather have our feet towards the door, which makes it easier to take our boots on and off without dirtying up the tent and have our doorway therefore facing away from the wind so that we don't get a cold blast of air when we unzip the tent in the morning. If we can't manage both of these conditions, then we'll go with keeping our heads at the higher end of the slope. And if that means we have to put our heads towards the doorway in order to have the doorway facing downwind, then we'll go ahead and do that. It just makes getting in and out of the tent just a little bit harder. When we are camping in the snow, there's a few other things that you can do to help set your camp. Remember, you can always shape snow to your liking. This allows you to do all sorts of things to make your site more comfortable. You want to tamp down the rectangular area that you're going to want to place your tent upon. We usually walk our snowshoes or our skis in a series of very small steps in order to get the entire rectangle flattened out and to compact any of that surface snow. If you don't have a flat area, you can dig out the uphill slope in order to level out for a tent platform. You can also dig out pits to place your tent in or to put up snow walls and use those as a windbreak. You can also carve out benches and tables for a comfortable camp kitchen. When it comes to tensioning your tent to hold up to the wind, it's helpful if you know a couple of basic hitches. If I'm needing to wrap a guy line around a fixed material like a tree or a rock, then it's helpful to know the taut line hitch. This hitch allows me to wrap my guy line around the fixed object and then increase or reduce the tension of the guy line by sliding the hitch up and down the standing strand. If I'm needing to place a stake at a distance that's less than where my guy line loop would naturally place the stake, then I can clove hitch the stake to the guy line in order to shorten that distance. To tie a taut line, make a turn around the post or other object, leaving a suitable tail in the line that's the material you're going to use to tie the hitch. Coil the free end twice around the line that leads towards the tent, but working your way back towards the post. Make one additional coil around that line, but this time on the outside of the coils that you just made. Run the free end through the last coil, tighten a knot, and slide it up towards the tent in order to add tension. To tie a clove hitch, wrap the free end of your guy line around your stake, crossing that free end under the loop that you've made around the stake. Now cross over and loop around the stake one more time, but this time take the loose end and run it above the first wrap but below the second wrap. Now pull tight and you can loosen and retighten to adjust the length and then drive the stake where you need to. Speaking of stakes, you're gonna to wanna to bring the right stake for the job. If you're camping in the snow, you're gonna want some kind of cupped stake that has holes in it. This is gonna allow you to run your guy line through and around the stake and place those stakes horizontally as dead men. We demonstrated how to place these stakes in the snow horizontally in our 12 tips for cold weather camping video. You can follow the link above to see that one. For hard ground, you need stakes that are more like a spike, that are less likely to bend under the pressure that you create by driving them into a hard surface. 
Now, to help avoid bending and damaging your stakes when placing these, you want to start by pressing the stake into the ground rather than hammering, and only resort to hammering once you can no longer gain any depth by pushing. Once your tent is up, you want to organize your camp. We found this is particularly important with kids. They have a tendency to leave stuff just anywhere when they don't have a visual cue about where to put their stuff. So we start by placing like items together, all of the packs in one place, trekking poles or axes or climbing equipment near the packs, food and stove near the cooking spot, water nearby but separated from the stove and fuel. And inside the tent, we make liberal use of Dyneema stuff sacks. Being Dyneema, they are very light and allows me to group, again, like items together. It's the same idea as having a keychain. One loose key is easy to lose, but a bunch of keys all tied together make a bulkier item that's easier to keep track of. Everything that I need to keep warm at night, if we're out in the winter, can all go into one stuff sack, like electronics, spare batteries, a cigarette lighter, that kind of stuff. Another stuff sack can have my next day's vitamins, allergy meds, any other medications, everything I know that I'm going to need health-wise to start my next day without me having to fish around for it all. And as we're getting our evening set up and making sure we're ready to face the next morning, we rely on a few more tips to make sure that things go smoothly. First is that our kids are obsessed with their headlamps. I think it makes them feel like explorers. And that's great, and we want to encourage it. But the downside is that they typically turn them on too early, and they leave them on when they aren't really using them. So yes, we've always brought spare batteries, but we've learned to bring spares for the spares. And speaking of spares, we've also learned to bring a spare set of liner gloves when we're out in the wintertime. It seems it's just a matter of time before the kids' outer mittens come off and the liner gloves are now getting saturated by snow. That can make for a cold morning when they need the dexterity of a thin glove and they can't use their mittens for that reason, say for eating breakfast or maybe dancing. So a warm second set of liners have become indispensable. Finally, we get our kids ready for bed by tying down the ends of their sleeping bags if they're in an adult bag. They don't really make kids' bags that are warm enough for winter camping, so when we do go out in the cold, they're in an adult-sized bag. Remembering that sleeping bags only trap in the heat your body is generating, having a little child's body generating heat to fill up the space of a big adult bag is kind of like having a small area heater trying to heat up a large room. So by tying off the bag at the bottom, you reduce the volume of air that your kids need to heat up in order to keep them warm. Well, that's a snapshot of how we end up approaching setting up our camp to help ensure a reasonably comfortable and efficient experience. If you found this information helpful, please hit that like button and share it with those who you think might be interested. If you have any particular processes or considerations that you keep top of mind for getting you and your family's camp location set up, let us know in the comments section. If you want additional information on this video or every video that we produce, along with links to the equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe. We produce how-to and educational videos like this one, as well as short films of our family adventures. And we release something new every week. And finally, if you have any suggestions for content you'd like to see or questions you'd like us to address, drop those in the comments section too. We'll see you out there and keep on getting more out of that big outside.